Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. And like my last movie review, Shazam, I too had saw this movie a few weeks ago, but never bothered to have a chance to talk about it because, of course, I'm always busy a lot with other things, even on summer vacation. <laughs> yeah, go figure. But hey, I'm, I'm not an everyday person these days. Well, I did finally saw the movie. Aladdin, which is Disney's latest live-action remake uh, based on the 1992 animated feature by Ron Clemens and John Musker, you know, the same team behind The Little Mermaid, which had uh, Robin Williams providing the, the voice of the genie, which he stole the show and he was hilarious. Plus you got uh, Scott Weinger as Aladdin, Linda Larkin as Jasmine, you got Douglas Seal as the Sultan, plus you got um, Gilbert Gottfried, who's hilarious as Yago, the Jafar's uh, assistant uh, parrot, and and of course, as I mentioned, Jafar, you know the powerful uh, villain that's voiced by Jonathan Freeman. And he also joins in with other uh, voice talents of Corey Burton and Frank Wilker, Jim Cummings, and Charlie Adler. <laughs> yeah. Had some had a wonderful score and music done by Alan Minkin. Uh, they also wrote uh, which uh, joins in with Tim Bryce uh, providing the uh, the lyrics. It's such a memorable film, no doubt. I mean, I still never forget watching the film on the original screening at AMC in Burbank, where it was just incomplete. I mean, you do see parts of the animation, but half of it is just uh, the hand-drawn animation that wasn't complete. But I just loved that. Before I get to see the entire movie, in animation form. I mean, it's, it was beautiful. Breathtaking, too. It had a lot of high energy. It was totally energetic. It had a lot of magic. It even had a, a blend of, of CGI into the hand-drawn animation that's all done in, in caps. Yeah. Like, for example, the Cable Wonders. You could tell that they use uh, computer-generated uh, images on how they created that by using the the tiger's by using the the tiger's head yeah <laughs> yeah classic well anyway the new version is directed by Guy Ritchie who's been best known for directing two of my favorites of his Lost Stock and Two Smoking Barrels and Snatch yeah, the film that actually launched careers of Jason Statham and has a lot of brilliant casts out there that you can name of, but those were awesome films. He also directed uh, Sherlock Holmes, his version with Robert Downey Jr., Jude Law, and Rachel McAdams. Really enjoy that. But yes, um, he does have a bit of hit and miss here and there. Like, I know. He he did direct one of the worst remakes, which when he was with um, Madonna at the time, called Swept Away from 2002, that was awful. Yeah, I mean, I never thought I would see Madonna this annoying in that film. I mean, in turn, it's, it was based on the original 70s Italian film. Uh, well, he also had directed some other films. Um, I actually didn't mind the, the sequel, A Game of Shadows, uh, from Sherlock Holmes. So, still entertaining at, at times. But he also directed, um, which I haven't seen yet, I still haven't, The Man from Uncle, yeah, based on the TV series, which is about, you know, secret agents, you know, saving the world, that sort of thing. Kind of like James Bond in the 
Now, um, judging by Disney's track record with live action remakes these days, uh, the ones that I did enjoy the most at this point on were Cinderella from 2015, as well as uh, The Jungle Book from 2016. I also didn't mind Beauty and the Beast, in spite of its flaws, and Alice in Wonderland by Tim Burton. Yeah, same year, flaws too, but st still enjoyable. I still have yet to check out Dumbo, because that just came out recently on Blu-ray. And I know it came out a few months ago. I did love uh, Mary Poppins Returns, uh, which is a sequel to Mary Poppins. Um, I still need to pick it up on Blu-ray someday, and hopefully someday I might review them. I just never had time. Yeah, I, I never had time anyway to review anything. Again. <laughs> uh, but the one... And I still haven't seen uh, Peach Dragon, so I've yet to check it out someday. I mean, I know. Again, busy. I didn't really care for Maleficent. I mean, despite of its moments uh, and the performances of Angelia Jolie as Maleficent and Ellie Fanning as um, Afora or Briar Rose, but it was a disappointment. You know, a lot of lousy changes here and there. It just felt like it was just mostly focusing on the villain's uh, origin, which was impressive, but at the same time, that's what they were going for. And yes, they're going to have a sequel, which is coming out this year. Not looking forward to it. So, such a shame. I did not care for Allison through the Looking Glass sequel. Yeah, that was a disappointment too, and awful also. It was, it was really bad. But anyway, but for this one, I got to be a little mixed on this one. Uh, but as for Aladdin, I was uh, quite disappointed. I mean, I was hoping this was going to be at least as entertaining as the 1992 film, yet alone the story. But it just, I don't know. I, I, I wanted this to be good at least. I mean, it's nice to hear that Will Smith is taking the choice to portray the role of the genie because, you know, he's actually having a lot of respect to uh, Robin Williams' performance. I mean, God rest his soul, because even though Williams had had a hard time uh, dealing with Disney because he feels like, you know, like they're just taking him away from the rest of the cats. That's understandable, so, I mean, in, in real life. But he's doing his best not to um, top it. And I know there are people who, who thought that the casting of, of him was the wrong choice, but they kind of proved themselves wrong at times. Um, but if you ask me, he is the best fan about the movie. I just feel like the entire cast could have been written better. And it's missing the magic and the energy that it had that made it special. So that's just how I felt. So let's just start with the review. It stars Will Smith, Mina Masao, Naomi Scott. In case you're familiar with this actress, she was previously in that awful... Power Rangers 2017 movie. Yeah, which was really boring. No energy whatsoever. Totally the worst uh, Power Rangers film I ever saw uh, two years ago. But yeah, she played uh, Kimberly in that film. Uh, Marwen Kazare, Nabit uh, Neklabon, Nasim Padrad. Billy Madderson, Numar Asgar, Jordan A. Nash, 
Taya Blair, Audrey Lynn, Amir Batros, with uh, Alan Tyke. Yeah, he's been best known for doing the uh, voice acting and or any other movies, the TV shows he's done. Yeah, and Frank Welker, the Boy Scout himself. Yeah. <laughs> It's written by John August, and it's co-written and directed by Guy Ritchie, all which is based on, as I mentioned, the 1992 animated feature, which had the story Aladdin and the Magic Lamp, yeah, an old Arabian fable from 1001 Nights. The movie begins where we meet a young, kind-hearted street rat named Aladdin, who's played by Mina Massal, who lives in the Arabian city of Aquaba, inside its entire place, with his pet monkey Abu, which is just go around stealing and borrowing a lot of stuff, you know, just so he can survive, because he's all alone. You know, his parents died when he was just a kid, so he just makes a living. Uh, but then one day he rescues and befriends, which at first, you know, she was just uh, given a name out of her sister. Um, but we all know that it's basically Princess Jasmine, who's played by Naomi Scott. Just snuck out of the palace from her father, the Sultan, because she's very tired of her sheltered life. But meanwhile, we meet the Grand Vizier, Jafar, who's played by Marwan Kazari, joins in with his pet uh, parrot named Yago, voiced by Alan Tyke. Anyway, he schemes to overthrow the Sultan by actually seeking the magic lamp that's hidden somewhere in the Cave of Wonders, yeah, which is the the tiger head that would actually grant him several riches at this rate free because that's the minimum but the only person to enter the diamond in the rough turns out to be Aladdin so Aladdin is being captured and Jafar persuades him to retrieve the lamp but inside the cave of wonders Aladdin finds a magic carpet uh, along with a boo which I know they were exploring and they spotted a lot of jewels and gold around and so they finally found the magic lamp and just when he was about to escape through the magic uh, carpet he gives it to Jafar but betrays him and just throws it back into the cave but surprisingly enough Abu just uh, rescues the, the lamp so he's the one that steals it so of course because Abu is very intelligent he can do anything <laughs> so once they're trapped inside the cave Aladdin rubs the lamp and that's where the genie appears who's played by Will Smith and he explains that he has the power to grant free wishes to Aladdin, but Aladdin does trick the genie into escaping the cave before he gives his first official wish, but it seemed like part of that was just an, an actual first wish. So, anyway, Aladdin was uh, wanted to use his first official wish, and that was to become a prince, which is Prince Ali of Abawa. And so at this point on, you know, things were pretty difficult for him too because he's starting to feel very nervous that, that he's now royalty and, and he just enters inside the palace just so he gets to know uh, the Sultan along with uh, Jasmine, which they both met at the marketplace. And then... Um, even Jasmine's sister, which also led to um, 
an interesting thought too was that you know the, the genie actually wants to get to know uh, Jasmine's sister so that way they can fall in love and be able to contact with each other too but yes Aladdin was just trying to do the same but then in this story here Jasmine was basically suspicious of Prince Ali trying to find out the, the city of Abawa hoping that this even exists but yes the genie basically helped and, and added it straight to the map so now we know <laughs> so, anyway so as things are going around you know they're just having you know a party you know presentations with several gifts and jams all the way around. Both um, Aladdin and Jasmine have bonded with each other. They wound up riding on the magic carpet, you know, just to explore a lot of stuff. Just before Jasmine found out about Aladdin's true identity. That's what seems to happen already. I mean, after all, Aladdin did already find out about Jasmine earlier but her true identity <laughs> yeah that, that sort of thing but then Jafar just discovers about Aladdin's identity and then that's when he suddenly throws him straight into the sea before the genie rescues him it was actually causing the second wish but at first, you know, he refused to free him, but he figured, well, why not? But then Genie had to tell Aladdin that he's not being true to himself at this point on. Yes, I mean, of course, he was very nervous at times and, and racking. So then Yago helped free Jafar, steals the lamp from Aladdin, and suddenly becomes Genie's new master, so he takes over and try to throw just hire the guards to throw uh, the Sultan and as well as Jasmine and her sister out of there and of course uh, Jasmine's uh, pet uh, Ben's guy uh, Tiger but to join in so and, and that's how uh, Jafar became so powerful until Aladdin came to the rescue along with Abu to save Jasmine along with the Sultan and the rest to stop the evil Jafar from taking over. And then once they finally defeated Jafar, now um, things went back to normal and that's when the, the genie finally gets his chance to actually uh, meet and they now became together you know, Jasmine's sister and they fell in love and they both have kids um, while Aladdin and Jasmine are just spending a new life together hoping that someday you know they'll they'll become a couple and hoping that things will be the best for them that sort of way pretty simple for the story but I think the film could have been better that's just the problem it's, it's missing high energy the magic the spirit of what the story was about I know I tried this hard to go for it but it just it just felt like it was flat to me but anyway as I mentioned earlier, I mean, Will Smith is definitely the best part of the film to me. He stole the show. He was having fun. It's, it's almost like he's the French Prince of Aquaba <laughs> right there. I mean, he's trying to do his best not to top Robin Williams, but he always comes up with a lot of funny jokes here and there. And also joins in, you know, singing all the other familiar songs from Alan Minkin. You know, like never had a friend like me or <laughs> or Prince Ali and that sort of thing 
but he's always fun to watch. I mean, even in CGI form, you know, yes, they, you know, the genie is blue, like the animated feature. But then we learned that in human form, he could be exactly who he really is. So, uh, but the cast. I'm sorry to say this, though. I thought the cast were pretty bland, boring, dull. I mean, at times, I just want Aladdin to just wake up and, and just have fun and become more energetic and heroic, too. I mean, geez, that, that's another thing that also surprisingly disappointed me was that we never get to see the final battle moment where Jafar transforms into a cobra and that's where you have Aladdin taking out some of the swords and, and defeated him or what he was going to before he becomes the genie you know, which had happened in the 1992 film you know that that's one thing that's missing I couldn't believe it. I didn't find any chemistry between uh, Mina Masal and Naomi Scott. I'm sorry, but I was hoping they were going to click together and hoping to give exactly what what the characters are supposed to portray. Because they're supposed to be as Arabian as they could be. Um, despite of the costume design that they were given, it just seems like, you know, they're just... <laughs> completely tired and bored and at times they keep bickering each other and, and it bothers me a bit. I mean I would say the worst performance had to be Marwin Kazari as Jafar. He just comes across as just as boring as he could be and, and I just didn't buy him really. Uh, Nabit uh, Naglabon is, is okay. I mean he was decent but but it just seems like he's just basically um, underused in a way. Um, meanwhile, um, Jasmine's sister, in fact, her name is uh, Dahlia, yeah, played by Nasim Padrad. Yeah, I forgot to mention her name. Who happens to be um, Jeannie's uh, love interest, but she is, of course, the loyal handmaiden. Um, she was alright, I'll give you that, um, but that's all I could say. Um, and Alan Tyke as Yago, I mean, totally overlooked. I mean, he only gives, like, a few lines of dialogue, and sounding exactly like what a parrot should sound like, but just not enough. Um... You do get Frank Wilker providing the voice of Abu, as well as Raja, you have the Bengal Tiger, and and the Cable Wonders, so you still have that. Uh, the sets alone, the location that they shot it, yeah, which also blends in with CGI, I mean, the CGI is not too bad. I mean, it's it's quite decent, but it's just, it's what it is. Um, it's there. I mean, it definitely has an Arabian feel to it. It feels like an Arabian city. And also has an Arabian feel to to Alan Menken's score. And all the songs that you're more familiar with, especially with Will Smith definitely uh, bringing some high energy into it. Because Smith definitely is more energetic. And he wasn't bored, he wasn't tired, I mean, he really plays it exactly what a genie should play. So, either way. And I also think the script needs to be um, written better, too. I mean, this is written by John August, uh, along with Guy Ritchie joining in. And I just think they really need to come up with a better lines of dialogue and try to make the story flow better. That's just what I'm trying to think of here. Richie's direction, however, I mean, it's a right, but it just could have been handled a little better, given the facts. So, I don't know. I, I just want this movie to be as energetic as the 1992 film, 
And even if they have to go for some darker traits, I just want the film to be as perfect as it could be. Uh, also, back to the song, um, there's also a new song called Speechless, which Naomi Scott sings you know, as Jasmine. I know that's supposed to be the strongest song of them all, but mm, it was alright, but I just didn't quite buy it in a way. Uh, so I don't know. So, either way, I had some high expectations for the film, but it just let me feel very sour. Hate to say this, but this is a disappointment. I mean, coming from Disney. But if you love the movie for all your mighty and, and soul, as well as hearts, then go right ahead. But I guarantee you, um, it's not going to be as good as the 1992 film, nor its uh, direct-to-video sequels, which is The Return of Jafar and Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Yeah, I forgot about those, but I'm glad I mentioned it now. <laughs> so, so basically, it's a miss for me. So anyway, that's Aladdin, and I give the movie two stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.